Hey everybody, this is Vince Miller. Thank you so much for joining me for our devotional. Today, we're in Job chapter 8, verse 4, which reads this way. If your children, that's Job's kids, have sinned against God, he has delivered them into the hand of their transgression. So now we move to the counsel of Job's next friend. His name is Bildad. And after reading this verse, I bet you wonder if Bildad is really a friend at all. Here are three things we notice about Bildad and his position in chapter 8. First, he's going to build on the opinion Eliphaz supports, which is that righteous people just don't suffer. Second, he's far less sympathetic to Job than Eliphaz was. And third, he's way more direct in how he states things. Bildad's point of view is that God punished his children for their sin and is now punishing Job for his sin and that Job needs to repent so that God will save him and restore his previous blessings. Now, his conclusion is, of course, dead wrong. And the theological name given to this position is called retribution theology. It's the belief that one gets what one deserves. You might think of it like Christian karma. <laughs> it presumes a connection between good people and good things and bad people and bad things. <laughs> Specifically, the good and the bad things that happen in this life. For example, if you get COVID in this life, it's an indictment that God is punishing you for something bad that you have done. On the other hand, if you become wealthy in this life, then it's an indication that God is blessing you for all the good things that you've done. But there are all kinds of problems with applying this understanding of retributive theology and retributive justice to the good and the bad things that happen to us in this life, in this life. One problem is this. It's that bad things happen to good people in this life. This is the lesson of Job's life. This was also the lesson of Christ's life. And sometimes, this is the lesson of our life. Sometimes, bad things happen to just people in general. In fact, at the end of this life, the end of this life, there will be retributive justice. And it comes with some very, very bad news. It's found in Romans 3.23, which reads, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All of us. In other words, at the end of this life, we will all pay retribution for our sin because we're all sinful and fall short. The very wrong assumption of retributive theology is that we can be good enough to earn or deserve a blessing from God in this life and thus also at the end of this life. This is just not possible. The only thing we deserve or earn is punishment for our sin. Even Job isn't going to be able to earn his way back to a blessing from God, which we will discover as we continue to read his story. But here's the good news. Jesus Christ paid the penalty for our sin, buying us back from the retribution that we deserve at the end of this life. Because eventually, at the end of this life, there will be retribution for wrongdoing. God will both punish sin and reward righteousness. But his retribution for sin was paid for in the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, his son. In the end, we're just all sinners who need redemption by God, who's willing to pay our retribution for our sin that he's going to hand out so that we can spend eternity with him. Now, that's really good news. So today, I want you to know this. God will redeem you from the retribution that you deserve. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If you want to make that confession for the first time today, let me know and I'll pray for you and with you. Thanks for joining me today. Share this post with someone you know and I'll see you right back here again tomorrow.